Today, I'm gonna to walk you through exactly how I color grade my footage inside of Premiere Pro. We're gonna be taking this clip from this to this, and this shot was shot on the Sony ZV-U1 in S-Log3. I'm not gonna be using any conversion LUTs. I'm not gonna be using any LUTs at all. We're gonna be doing everything manually. All right, so without further ado, let's dive in to Premiere Pro. All right, so here we are inside of Premiere Pro and we are kicking things off in, of course, the color tab. And we're over here in basic correction. So this is the shot. This is what it looks like before. We've just got this guy standing in a rice terrace with a load of grass on his head. Okay, let's kick things off in the basic correction tab. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is because this was shot in S-Log3, we need to bring all of the color and all of the contrast back into the shot. This was shot just after sunrise, so the light is absolutely stunning. We got very lucky with the light here. It's also pretty well balanced exposure wise. It isn't too bright and it's not too dark. I already know we're gonna be losing quite a little bit of detail on his face purely because it's so deep in the shadows, but everything else is gonna look good and these colors are gonna balance very, very nicely. All right, let's bring all the color, uh, let's bring all the colors and contrast back. So first thing we're gonna do is just drop the shadows and that's gonna bring a whole load of it back. We're also then just gonna taper off the highlights a little bit. It's probably a little bit too bright over here and we can check that with our Lumetri scopes. Yeah, you can see we've got a lot of, uh, of information in those highlights. If we start to bring them back, we can drop them off nicely there. It's probably a little bit too low, maybe between 80 and 90 over there. Now we're just gonna drop these shadows a little bit more and then you can already see if we could just click this FX button before and after, things are already looking nicer. We're not gonna be pushing the contrast slider at all. I wanna do everything more or less manually. So we're gonna open up the curves tab here and this is where we can add a whole load of contrast back into our shot. So I'm gonna place a point here, I'm gonna place a point here and place a point here. This is the shadows, this is gonna be the midtones, and this is the highlights. At least that's the area of the uh, tone curve that we're playing with. So I'm just gonna drop this a little bit we're going to increase the midtones a little bit, and then we're also gonna increase those highlights as well. We're going after a nice S curve here, and this is looking good. I'd say those highlights got raised just a little bit too much, so bringing those back down just a touch, making sure they sit between 90 and 80 there, I think that's the sweet spot for this shot. Now I can tell you straight from the get-go, we have a lot of bright areas in the corners, as you can see, and this is gonna work really well when we put a vignette on our shot later on. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this correction. If we turn this off and back on, we're already in so much more of a better spot. I'm very happy. The next thing I wanna nail is our white balance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in over here, just under the preview window. I'm gonna zoom into about, maybe I'm gonna need a little bit more than 100%, 200%. I can see uh, on this farmer's skin tone, it's probably a little bit green. So what I might do is just slightly raise the tint into the purple spot just a little bit. That's changed things nicely. And then we also might just increase the warmth a touch. These are really, really small values, but they do make the small little changes that are necessary. A little before and after, by the way, I'm gonna be doing that so much throughout this video. That's, this is exactly how I keep up and kind of monitor how I'm progressing in my color grade. I'd suggest you do the same, but it's uh, definitely a habit that I'm in now. So let's open up the curves tab. Um, and we've already kind of nailed our, our tone curve here. So I'm happy with how that looks. The S curve really brings back a lot of contrast and punch into our shot. And now we get to play with the colors. And I'll be honest with you, usually my color grading process doesn't really look like this. At this point, I'd just add one of my LUTs, maybe dial down the intensity just a little bit if I've already corrected the contrast and I'm good to go. However, today I'm not gonna be using my cinematic LUTs as per usual because that would be showing you absolutely nothing. But if you wanna skip this entire process for every single clip you shoot, and you just want solid, good contrast and great colors from the jump, you can do so using my cinematic LUTs. You can find them in the first link down below this video and you can use this discount code at checkout for a cheeky little discount. So if you've already gone and done that, well done. You just saved yourself a load of time. But like I said, today we're not using any LUTs, so let's dive back into Premiere Pro. All right, so we're coming down to the hue saturation, hue versus hue and hue versus luma curves. I can tell already since we added a little bit of purple into our shot, the sky has gone a little bit purple, a tiny, tiny bit. So what I wanna do is I wanna come to the hue versus hue and I'm gonna select around the purple and the blue area, set my in and out points there, and then I'm gonna move this up into the aqua and blue zone. And just by doing that, I feel like it's reduced that purple tint just a little bit and now it's brought the sky back to where I wanted it to be, but then I get all the benefits from adding that tiny amount of purple back into the shot where you know the farmer's skin tone looks good and the greens look accurate. So I'm happy with how that's looking. 
I'm then gonna come down to Hue versus Luma and we're going to put an endpoint just on the kind of edge of yellow and the edge of green. And then we're gonna drop the luminance. Now this should have a nice effect just on the green colors in here. It's gonna add a little bit more contrast and pretty much what dropping the luminance does is just dropping how bright a color is. Of course, changing the hue is gonna change how the color is represented and then changing the saturation, of course, is going to change how strong a color is gonna come out in our shot. And with that being said, I actually wanna increase the blues in this shot because they're quite faded at this time, especially this time of day. As you can see, we're not getting too much back. Those blues must be really faded. What I can do is I can get this dropper right here and I can tell Premiere to find that color for me. And even here, if I increase this saturation, I'm not, I'm not getting too much in my shot. I'm not getting too much, uh, too much of an increase. So what I'm gonna do is since this is where Premiere Pro told me the color was, I'm just gonna add some points around that color and then I'm gonna hold control, uh, hold command, sorry, on a Mac, control on a Windows, uh, PC, <laughs> on a Windows, on a Windows computer, and then I'm gonna remove those so it just is kind of a little bit bigger and it's not just one, you know, sharp point in there. So I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. Let's have a look at the before and after. I think the colors are looking really nice. If anything, I might come back into the basic correction and just increase the temperature a little bit, not much but just a touch. I really like the warm vibe on this shot. Then we might also come into the tone curve and just drop the shadows a little bit more. I think that's looking good. All right, let's close up that. Let's dive into our color wheels and match. Now this is where we can push and pull some colors in and out of certain parts of our shot. First thing on the chopping block, I might look at adding a little bit of blue to our highlights, just something fairly tame, nothing too crazy. And I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. If I turn that off and turn that on, it just takes a little bit of the warm vibe away from the shot, which I know is interesting since we're adding warmth uh, in the basic correction, which I might actually just add a little bit more of, but I really want that blue sky to pop. And that's why we're gonna be doing exactly that. It'll just be a little bit of a balancing game. I don't wanna turn things green. I want them more blue than they are green because I really don't want this palm tree to turn green. And if I turn this off and back on, things are looking good. If I have a look over here at our uh, Lumetri scopes, Things are also looking really good. Everything is really spread out. We've got a nice level of contrast in our shot and it's only gonna get better from here. So I'm actually gonna leave that for now. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Um, we're gonna do all the vignette stuff later on in this video with masking, which is what we're about to jump into. The last thing I wanna do is I'm gonna add a second Lumetri color effect and then I wanna make sure that one is, oh, actually I can just do that here. Make sure that one is selected, which it is. I'm gonna open up correction, come back to the Lumetri scopes, and I'm gonna look at just dialing back the shadows a little bit more. I have a feeling over here, it's just a little faded, and over here it's a little faded, and when I drop those shadows, things get just a little bit nicer. So nothing too crazy, but since we pretty much maxed out the slider over here, and I don't wanna just push that to 100, I'm just gonna open up a new one here, and I've got a little bit more control, and I can obviously go a lot further as well. So just dropping that a little bit, happy with that. Okay, let's jump into masking. So what we're gonna do is open up our Lumetri uh, color drop down menu here, add a Lumetri color effect. I'm gonna need to open up uh, effects controls and I'm gonna close the top two. This is the original grade. This is just that little bit more uh, of a shadow reduction. And now we're gonna add a mask on our third Lumetri color effect. We're gonna add a radial mask just like this. And then we're gonna increase the feather like crazy. And we're also going to increase the mask, ex mask expansion just a touch. And then we're going to invert that mask to make sure it's selecting the outside. Then we can come in here and start to drop the shadows, dial that back quite a lot. Even the exposure in general, just kind of dialing that back a touch. Now, if we remove that, so we can't see that mask anymore. Not removing the mask, but we just don't want it that overlay. I can come in here, I can turn this off and back on. Oh, 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 oh. I can turn it off and now back on. And this just kind of levels things out a little bit. It makes it look a little bit cleaner and I really like how that looks. Now there are a few other masks that I wanna add in this shot. One of them is gonna be emphasizing where that light is coming from. So we're gonna add another radial mask once we've added our uh, fourth Lumetri color effect. We're gonna come over here. We're not gonna invert it this time, but we are still gonna increase the feather quite a lot. And then we can come in here and just increase the highlights ever so slightly. Now this just adds a little bit more of an emphasis of where that light is coming from. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's just have a little playback of this shot. I'm really liking this shot. The only thing I wanna do is I'm gonna come back into our original grade, which is our first Lumetri color one. 
then I want to dive into here and zoom in and things still look just a little bit green and yellow. So what I'm going to do is just increase this maybe to five. Okay, maybe to six. No, I think five is good there. I think that's looking quite tasty. What we might do though is um, we're going to open up our curves here, hue saturation. We're going to click on a part of the green that I'm really not vibing with, probably that one there. Okay, more yellow than green. Then we can fit, zoom it back out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to expand this. Well, just a, just a touch like that. We can remove that by holding command. And then we're going to drop the, expo uh, the, the saturation on this, just a touch. Nothing too crazy. And I'm liking how that looks. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm not sure what it was. Maybe there was just a yellow green kind of hue that I wasn't rocking with, but I think it looks good. Okay, now with that out of the way, we're going to add our sixth, I think, one, two, three, sixth lumetri color effect. I wanna make this green over here, this green grass, just a little bit darker. I'm gonna increase that feather, and then we can come in here. We can even just do it with our, um, with our tone curve. We can increase that a bit, and that is just going to add a little bit of contrast, whoop, a little bit of contrast back into that area of the shot. I feel like now it's not as distracting. I'm not sure why before, but I just, I just, found it a little bit distracting, which was rubbing me the wrong way. So now that looks just a little bit cleaner. I'm happy with that. And I think we're gonna do the same on the other side of the shot as well. I'm gonna close that, open this up. And just like that, because this is quite a stable shot, we don't need to worry about the masks moving around all that much. We're just gonna drop the shadows here as well. Okay, that is looking incredibly tasty. So if we play this back, Let's have a look, the masks are looking good. Laptop's choking up a little bit for some reason. Either way, this is looking good. I'm super stoked with how this shot has come out. And just a quick before and after, it won't be a quick before and after because we need to turn all of these off. But this is where we started. This is the main grade. And then everything else, all these little masks, all these other little changes, get the shot to where it is now. All right, guys, that wraps up my full Premiere Pro color grading workflow, of course. Every single shot is gonna be different. And I've done a very similar video for many, many different shots. Drone shots, city shots, night shots, you name it. I've color graded a load of clips on this channel already. So if you want a full walkthrough and breakdown of exactly how I do that, you can check them out over on my channel. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.